There is a natural body and there is a spiritual body. And so it is written, the first man Adam was made a living soul. The last Adam was made a quickening spirit. How did that was not first, which is spiritual, but that which is natural. And afterwards, that which is spiritual, the first man is of the earth. Earthy, the second man is of the Lord from heaven, and as the earth. Such, such are they also that are earthy, and as the heavenly. Such are they also that are heavenly. And as we have borne the image of the earth, we shall also bear the image of the heaven. But thanks be to God, who gives us his victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brother, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. For as much as you know, your labor is not in vain. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green path. He leads me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy will follow me. All the days of my life. Jesus said, I am the resurrection, the truth, and the life. No man can get to the Father except by me. So let not your heart be troubled. If you believe in God, Jesus said, You also believe in me. For at my Father's house are many mansions. And if it was not so, I would have told you. Though I go prepare a place for you, that where I am, you may be also.
she going to be? At this time, if able, please not put a red in the red. Great, great, great.
first day to our country. The Bible says, Blessed is the man that walk not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stand in the way of the sinner, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and does he meditate on it day and night. We want to thank and praise God for this hour to celebrate this brother's life. He was a good brother. Amen. Amen. Husband, father, and grandfather. Yes. But we have to do some, some protocol or some policing here. The family has went to great extent to put on the program and to print out this program or who they would like to be on celebrating Deacon Weaver's life. But as the pastor told us on last night that it's not today that they're going to need you, but they're going to need you tomorrow, the next day, yeah. the next week, the next month, the next year. Amen? Yeah. So we're going to have our invocation by our Reverend Dr. Jerome Weaver, followed by a solo by Chantel Weaver, in that order. Amen? Yeah. Amen. Bless you, everybody. No, I said God bless you. Amen. 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 This is a day of celebration. You see, tears and grief and heartache, mourning, folks, that's a natural part of the grief channel. So don't fight back tears and don't hold back grief. It's called being human. Amen. 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 But let's not get it twisted. We're not here as a sad, mournful, horrible occasion. You see, my brother was a good man. My brother was a great husband. My brother was a good, good father, grandfather, family member. He was great. And if he was half as good a person, a deacon, as he was a person to his family, then here before us lies a good man. Amen. Come on, somebody. Amen. 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 
And amen. And so, the most important thing about today, my brothers and my sisters, is that David Eugene Weaver was a man of God. Amen. He loved the Lord. He heard his cry, and he answered his call to service. And so when he went to sleep, he woke up in the presence of glory. Amen. So what do we say in response to this? We say praise God in the sanctuary. Yes. We say praise him in the mighty heavens. We say praise him for his acts of power. We say praise him for his surpassing greatness. Praise him with the sounding trumpet. Praise him with the harp and lyre. Praise him with the timbrel and dancing. Praise him with strings and pipes. Praise him with the clash of cymbals. Praise him with resounding symbols. As a matter of fact, let everything and everybody praise ye the Lord. And so, God, we thank you today for David Weaver. We thank you for 65 years. And today we come to rejoice that his body is not wrapped with pain. He doesn't need that cane anymore. We rejoice that he's going to keep running here and there trying to get help. His help came from the Lord. Yes, yes. And we thank you that to be absent from the body yes. is to be present with the Lord. Yes. Thank you. 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 Bless us now. And Jesus. Getting on and on, who's ahead of my life? I just want to say thank you, brother, for 33 plus long years of being a great man.
but we can celebrate a risen Savior because we know that our Redeemer, he lives. We're going to have our, our Old Testament churches written by Reverend Darren Tyler, followed by New Testament by Raymond White. Amen. Amen. I'll be reading from Psalms 90, beginning with the first verse. Lord, thou hast been our dwelling place in all generations. Before the mountains were brought forth, or ever thou had formed the earth and the world, even from everlasting to everlasting, thou art God. Thou turnest man to destruction and said, Return, ye children of men, <laughs> for a thousand years in the sight, in thy sight, all oh, but as yesterday when it is past, and as a watch in the night. Thou carriest them away as with a flood, they are as asleep. In the morning they are like grass which groweth up, in the morning it flourishes and groweth up. In the evening it is cut down and withered. For we are consumed by thine anger, and by thy wrath are we troubled. Thou hast set our iniquities before thee, our secret sins in the light of thy countenance. For all our days are passed away in thy wrath. We spend our years as a tale that is told. The days of our years are three score years and ten. And if by reason of strength they be four score years, yet is their strength, labor, and sorrow. For it is soon cut off, and we fly away. The 90th Psalms, verse 1 through 10. May all the people of God be blessed by this holy word. A New Testament scripture coming from 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, commencing at verse 13 from the New Living Translation. And it reads, And now, dear brothers and sisters, we want you to know what will happen to believers who have died, so you will not grieve like people who have no hope. For since we believe that Jesus died and was raised to life again, we also believe that when Jesus returns, God will bring back with him the believers who have died. We tell you directly from the Lord, we who are still living when the Lord returns will not meet him ahead of those who have died. For the Lord himself will come down from heaven with the commanding shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trumpet call of God. First, the believers who have died will rise, will raise from their graves. Then together with them, we who are still alive and remain on the earth will be caught up in the cloud to meet the Lord in the air. Then we will be with the Lord forever. So encourage each other with these words. I pray that these words will be a comfort to you in your trying times and know that God will forever be with you. Amen. This will be my last time getting up we will have our reflections as a deacon, Ronald Scott, as a co-worker, Kevin Flowers, as a VFW, Reverend White, as a family member, Jerome Green, 
followed by a resolution and acknowledgement by Sister Karen Mimi Scott in that order. And the next, after the hymn of praise, the next voice she will hear will be the pastor of this great church and the pastor of Deacon Weaver and his family, Pastor Eric Cummings Sr. Amen. In that order. Good morning, church. Good morning, family. Uh, deacons of New Zion, please stand, please. Ready for Vanessa. Surviving deacons. Thank you. First Timothy, First Timothy chapter 3, uh, starting at verse 8, says, Likewise, must the deacon be great, not double-tongued, not given too much wine, not greedy of filthy liquor, holding the mystery of the faith in a pure conscience, and let these also be first proved. Then let them use the office of the deacon being found blameless. Even so must their wives be grave, not slanderous, sober, faithful in all things. Let the deacons be the husbands of one wife, ruling their children and their houses well. Verse 13, for they, for they that have used the office of a deacon well purchased to themselves a good degree, and great boldness in the faith which is in Christ Jesus. I stand this morning to, to attest that I think we were met those requirements and exceeded them. Amen. But um, Deacon Weaver was a man of character. You heard already some things last night. Uh, you heard his brother this morning. You heard his sister, I think it was his sister singing the song? Sister-in-law. Sister-in-law. Uh, I see uh, his granddaughter is a great singer. Because I think he's been holding back on his own devotions. I think Deacon Weaver probably had a, a good song in his heart that he could also sing, but that's not why I'm here today. He was chosen at one time. I remember when he was chosen to be our deacon chair. Uh, even when he was got, before he got ordained, he was thinking that, man, I'm not worthy to be a uh, deacon. I said, we write a song with at that time. Yes, you are. You just feel good, man. You serve your, you serve God, you serve your country, you serve your family. Now there's nothing wrong with taking this opportunity to serve as our deacon chair. He would always tell me, he said, Man, I don't know, I don't know how to pray. Deacon, I don't know how to pray. I can't pray like Deacon Weaver. I can't pray like I pray like this. I said, Well, deep, you know what? Just pray like Deacon Weaver. Just pray like Deacon Weaver. And he stepped up on that on that task of praying. He was a regular attender of our Sunday school. Every other Sunday, uh, he would, along with Deacon Tyler, would serve as our prayers, open up our prayers, and he did a wonderful job. I, I, I would tell him, I said, look, every now and then, you need, if you need a cheat sheet, pull out your cheat sheet. You know, there's nothing wrong with, you know, understanding where you are. If he was serving God, he was, a, he was a servant. Sometimes I would call him hard-headed. I would say, Dick, why are you so hard-headed? Why, why, why are you just so persistent? But I, I realized this morning that he's not, he wasn't hard-headed. He was very determined. That's right. He was very determined. If he said he was going to do something, you can count on it. He would leave dialysis and drive directly from dialysis to whatever event that we may be having. And that was his, his determination and his commitment to do what he said. He was a man of his word. If he said yes, he meant yes. If he said no, Cut it off, because he gave that look. He gave that table that we will look. He was a man of God. And I really loved him. Sometimes I would call him when, when I was thinking about him, and I was, I was, you know, he wouldn't talk too much. And I said, "Hey, D, how you doing? I'm all right." You know, he would come and see if I'm all right. And then sometimes he'd be a little, a little pause of silence and before I hang up the phone, I would say, "You know, D, you leave him, I love you." You know what his reply was? Okay. It's important that we as men, we we, we, we got to understand that telling each other that we love each other, there's nothing wrong with that. And then acknowledging that we're turning, see, I love you. But I knew that he loved me because even when I was by myself making poor decisions or about to make a poor decision, he would comfort me, he would encourage me, you know, it's going to be all right. And those kind of men I needed in my life at the time that he was here to say, you know what, it's going to be all right also. And lastly, he would send out his uh, uh, his text 
Saturday before first Sunday. He was very clear on what our attire would be. And every night then I come up here and I would not have my gloves. I said, I don't have gloves. He said, okay, he pulled out his glove. You ready to go Dick Weaver? Uh, this last time, you don't have to tell me about my gloves no more. <laughs> Family, I, I thank you for this opportunity to, to, to share with uh, Deacon. He would be surely missed, and he was a provider. He really, 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 I can't say much how much he loved his family. Amen. of the veterans of foreign walls. I found great honor working with Commander Weaver for the last couple of years. And I would like to present this Bible to you in recognition of the veterans of foreign walls, and especially the Brady Owens post-7193. May this be a token of our love and continued support as you go through these times. Salute. Order of. Maybe see. sure who Brother Green is, but my name is Teron Weaver. <laughs> <laughs> and I apologize for interrupting the brothers of the BFW government. I don't know if uh, you guys remember or not, but several years ago in the uh, comic world, they had so-called death of Superman. They made a big deal about the death of Superman. As a matter of fact, it rocked the foundations of the comic universe. Wonder Woman jumped in her invisible plane and flew high above the realities of now, and pulled out her golden lasso in a desperate attempt to beat back the clouds of despair Aquaman goes deep into the depths to roll back the waves of discouragement that, and heartache that fill the soul. Flash Gordon started racing around the earth, trying to stir up the winds of change back to better days. The hawk got so mad that he literally started beating down the mountains, wanting to create rumbles of distraction to take his mind off his pain. Then somebody made a call across the cosmic universe to distant cousins, and so he got hold of Roadrunner. Roadrunner tried to outrun reality to escape it all. Amen. He ran right over the Tweety Bird tops. Who was perched up securely in his finite cage of human limitations. 
Tweety thought about it for a moment, and he recalled a conversation he once had with God in the loneliness of his circumstances, where he heard the Lord speaking to him, and he said something like this. He said, the earth is the Lord's, and the fullness thereof. He said, I know the plans, Tweety, that I have for your life. Yes. Yes. Plans for good. Not harm. Yes. Plans to build you and to prosper you. Yes. Now all of a sudden, Tweet's pain turned to joy. Mm. And he found himself singing. And he sang something like this. He said, I sing because I'm happy. Yes. He said, I sing. Because I'm free. It says it's I. It's on the spell. So I know he's looking down and tweeting like me. On July 3rd, my Superman died. You don't have to know my story. So I tell you. This right here, my mother and my father died. Tweet was the one I looked up to. He was literally the center of my world. Everything about him I wanted to be like. From getting in trouble in that dumb old clubhouse out in the middle of the woods and Isabel Circle. To running away from Uncle Joe, he and Greg are getting in trouble in the juke joint. <laughs> Everything about Tweet I wanted to do baseball, basketball, football, you name it, I wanted to run behind him. Because Tweet was my Superman. And daddy couldn't get shoes for us to wear. Tweet bottom. There are no clothes for us to wear. Tweet gave them to us. He made sure we had everything about my brother. He was my hero. And I loved him. And I wanted to be him. And I wanted to be like him. Even to the point of trying to join the military. <laughs> and they didn't want me. <laughs> to the Weaver family, those of you who are here, Adam's family, y'all know what I mean. When I say tweet, was a centerpiece. He was our place of connection. People like tweet try to keep in touch with all of us. Tweet, Tweet, Tweet didn't get in trouble with the silliness and the chaos. He sought to rise above it because he valued family in connection. Y'all, Tweet was a good man. Tweet wasn't no angel. And last I heard, Y'all correct me as I'm wrong, if I'm wrong. I'm sure there's some elders in here who might be able to talk. No, I doubt that. But the last perfect man died on heaven. And all of us are but a work in progress. We don't hold the hurt. And we have to erase the faults and give room to grace and compassion and mercy. And give change a chance. Amen. He left us now to go to a better place. Amen. But we're still in the fight. Make it count. To the glory of God. Amen. Honor of the legacy of a good man.
morning. All to Jesus I surrender. All to him I freely give. I will ever love and trust him in his presence daily live. I surrender all. I surrender all. All to thee, my blessed Savior, I surrender all. To Reverend Cummins, our pulpit ministry, the bereaved family, officers, members, and all of our Christian brothers and sisters in Christ. I will now acknowledge the resolutions. I have one from Marion Senior Services, Thompson McCoy American Legion, Raymond White Commander, BFW Post 7193. Our New Zion Deacon Ministry, our New Zion Deaconess Ministry, our Deaconess 12 Steps to Jesus Ministry. I have one from the Second Bethlehem Baptist Association, the Deacons Ministry. The director is Deacon Phillips Woods. Resolution of respect and love for the family of Deacon David E. Weaver. When we feel we have nothing left to give, and we are sure that the song has ended, when our day seems over and the shadow falls and the darkness of night has descended, where can we find the hand that will dry the tears that the heart is crying? There's but one place to go, and that is to God. For he will wipe away your tears and ease the pain from your heart. Resolution Saturday, April 13, 2024. We, the officers and members of New Zion Missionary Baptist Church, submit this resolution on behalf of the family of Deacon David E. Weaver. Whereas the passing of your family member is the will of God, and yet, there is a human tie that has been broken, which bleeds the heart in agony and pain. You must find comfort and consolation in the words of Jesus, who said, Cast your burdens on him, for earth hath no sorrows that heaven cannot heal. Lift your head and be strong, for God is able to comfort and cheer. He will dry your tears and heal your broken heart. If you put your unwavering faith in him, he will see you through. Let it be resolved that we bow in humble submission to the will of our Heavenly Father, knowing that God is too wise to make a mistake. He is too good to do anything cruel, and he's too just to do wrong. Realizing that weeping may endure for the night, but joy is coming in the morning. Yes. Be it also resolved that the new dying missionary back. Baptist Church family is keeping the family lifted in prayer and knowing God will comfort you in your time of grief and be it further resolved that a copy of this resolution will be recorded in our records and a copy will be given to the family. May God bless you and give you strength and courage. Prayerfully submitted, Reverend Eric E. Cummins, Senior Pastor, Sister Karen Mim Scott Church Court. God looked around his garden and found an empty place. He then looked down upon the earth and saw your tired face. He put his arms around you and lifted you to rest. God's garden must be beautiful. He always takes the best. He saw the road was getting rough and the hills were hard to climb. So he closed your weary eyelids and whispered, Peace be thy. It broke our hearts to lose you, but you didn't go alone. For part of us went with you the day 
God called you home. Amen. The Weaver family would like to take this opportunity to thank you for the many acts of kindness shown during this their time of bereavement. In whatever manner displayed, whether prayers, calls, food, flowers, or hand holding, it was received with great appreciation, and you will be thanked individually at a later date. Thank you, and may God bless you and keep you. Give God some praise this
merciful God. Holy God. We come to this hour. Thank you, God, for God for allowing us to open our eyes this morning to see a new day, a day that we've never seen before. A day with new mercies. A day, God, that brought us to the city we've never seen before. God, you know why we're here today. our Savior, God the Holy Ghost, our Comforter. For the three make one, and were it not for the three, none of us could be here on this day to reside on the Selene, the Tyler, the White, the Porter, the other preachers that may be in the house to all of you Father's children, who call him not robbery, who come and celebrate this man's life yeah. and his legacy. Yeah. Y'all, y'all, please don't see that. Let's just thank you. I don't know um, what happened. Try to be strong for <laughs> family. But then all of a sudden, as I was getting ready to come up here, it just kind of came down on me. And let me help you all this. It's natural for things to come down on you. When someone means something to you. Now, they don't mean anything to you, do It's just another day. But when they mean something to you, they pull on your heartstrings. Deacon Weaver pulls on all of our heartstrings. That's why we're here. That's why we're here to here to celebrate this man, this man, this this man. Let's 
to celebrate a husband, a father, grandfather, brother, uncle, brother, you. Amen. To celebrate a deacon, a comrade. One that wore many, many hats. We come to celebrate him. And I need you to know that the Deacon David Weaver that I know does not want us to be here all day. <laughs> Too long. He will give me a signal <laughs> to let me know that it was going a little too long. But even if it went wrong, he still stayed committed. And he would tell me afterwards, Pastor. This is, this is cold, I didn't wait too long. Pastor, we're going to get something to eat right now. That means I don't went into the lunch hour. <laughs> well, man, let me say this to you. Uh, your husband loved you. Yes, I did. Let me say it again. He loved you. Y'all were one heart. Y'all beat us one. Two. And you were young. And how I know he loved you because he told me the same story about five times. <laughs> He told me that he met you at a club. <laughs> Somebody might be looking strange. Y'all have been to clubs. And he said, You was fine. <laughs> F I N N E, fine. <laughs> That's what he said. Let's tell him what he said. And he said, He saw you. So you have a tight. Uh -oh. <laughs> I think jokes. <laughs> so we all heard the story. He <laughs> said, at that moment, that's how we know. That's right. He loved you. I don't care what y'all may have went through in life. He loved you. And to his children, he loved y'all too. His children, his grandchildren, his great grandchildren. He loved you all. Deeply loved you all. There was nothing that would hinder him from getting to you all. There used to be a song called What a Man, What a Man, What a Mighty Good Man. Thank you, both And I thought about the we were because I kept, that's all kept coming from my mind. What a man, what a man, what a mighty good man he was. Because he wasn't just good to his family, he was good to everybody he ran to. Amen, right. somebody. Amen. His brother just told you how, how he was a brother, a mother, and a father yeah. to them. And how he looked out for them. And I, I, I looked at this man because I, I love Deacon Weaver. 
So my mom had to get a lot of people weep. And because there was something different about David weep. And when I look at him in his latter years, years, I saw his his frailty. I saw him getting weaker. But yet, his mind was getting stronger. And his spiritual walk was getting bolder. Amen. The body might have been breaking down. But his walk with God was getting stronger. And, and I wouldn't wasn't thinking about him going on or being not, not being here never ran across my mind that he wouldn't be here right now. And as I was trying to prepare a message about Deacon Reaver, I, I realized that I really don't have to prepare a message for him because you already know the message about him. His walk preached its life. I, I, I looked at a couple of scriptures that I wanted to expound on for a few minutes to help the family. One, because he was a, a seaman. He was in the military. He served faithfully this country. From the time I thought about 2 Timothy 2, the scripture says, Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. I thought about his hardness and how he had been a soldier in the, the military for the United States and how he loved his days of military service. We often tell us about things that he did in the military, things about when he went scuba diving and all those types of things. He loves serving his country. And I, as I looked at that scripture, I thought about his heart as how on the outside he looked like he would go off in a New York minute. <laughs> Amen. But when you got to know him, you realize he did smile every now and then. Amen. But that wasn't that wasn't the scripture that the Lord wanted me to deal with. He reminded me that that we was not that much older than me. And that he was still a young man. And that it seemed like his life went too fast. So he took me to the scripture, James. 4, 14. And that scripture reads, Whereas you know not what shall be on tomorrow, but what is your life? It is even a vapor that appeareth for a little time and then vanisheth away. That's speaking weak. That vapor. If I had to put a tag on this note, I would tag it the, the fragility or the fragileness of life. Because we only get one life. And we have to make the best of that one life. I don't want to talk back to me, but it don't matter. I am for you. I'm here to do it. Listen, life is so fragile that you can be up one minute. And the next minute, stressed out. It's fragile. It's fragile. It doesn't take long for things to happen. Matter of fact, the Bible says, in a moment, in a twinkling of an eye, things can change. And, and, and I, I, I think about my, my friend, my deacon chair, 
I, I think about my brother David Weaver, and he, he, it was he was fragile. Yes, was. Not in his mind, not in his constitution, not in, in the way he fought or or the, the things he said, but his body became fragile. Are y'all here, Brooklyn? Yeah. So, so when I think about my friend, my brother, my chair, I think about how even in his pain, he still endured hardness as a good soldier. Yes. I, I go back to a few years ago. And me and Linda may laugh about this the other day. I, I remember Reverend Tyler and Earl Porter, y'all were here. I remember when the Weaver family was looking for a church home. That's right. Amen. Amen. I wasn't the pastor then. I was a minister. So Chapman, you were here too. And I remember the family came in. It was a, it was a, it was a little nine. <laughs> <laughs> and I remember being over Dr. Lewis. I said, You know that? He said, No, I don't know. And I said, Is he a preacher? He said, I say, He is. He got his own congregation. <laughs> <laughs> he came on that side of the church. He sat down. And I remember a couple of days after that. Dr. Wilson said, man, we got to get them pills fixed. He said, why? He said, remember that family? He said, they told that lady's dress. <laughs> Amen. I said, well, they ain't coming back here then. <laughs> but look at God. <laughs> <laughs> and David Weaver came in with his family. And he came in not to just sit and look, Amen. but he came in with a willingness to work. Amen. He understood that his life was nothing but a vapor. He understood that we don't have a long time here on earth. Amen. And some of us think we're going to live forever. But let me help you out. If you have Changing colors. <laughs> or if you like me, ain't got no hair. It's wrong. We in the same club. It lets you know that we're not going to be here forever. Every day, things change with us. Our steps get a little short. Our eyesight get a little Dim. Our voices sometimes get a little weaker. Yes, yes. We're only here for a brief moment. Yes. So therefore, while we're here, we need to make the best yes. of the time yes. that we're here. I, I, I like this. I like this text because this text says that we don't know what tomorrow has in store for us. Yeah. We don't know what's going to happen in the next 10 seconds. God forbid we all here in the church but a plane could crash right now. We don't know. But God knows. And since we don't know and since God knows, why not put our lives in the hands of the one who knows? Yeah. Because when you put your lives in the hands of the one who knows, he guides you and he keeps you and he covers you and he protects you and he makes sure that everything's going to be all right. We all dying one of these days, we all going to have to leave here. And when you leave, you have some folk that will come up, say a couple nice words about you. You have some folk that will make a phone call to the family, encouraging them. 
You have some folk that will write some nice resolutions and buy some beautiful flowers. You're going to have some folk that's even going to bring some chicken by the house. It's going to happen. But, but don't be concerned about that scene. I want you to think about what James was saying here about this, this vapor. He was talking about his life. He was talking about how fragile life is. And, and when we realize how fragile life is, we, 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 we tend to cherish life a little bit more. Yes. A vapor. A vapor is simply a faintly visible suspension. Right. The fine particles of matter in the air, mist. Fumes, smoke, that quickly evaporate. And I, 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 I pause to wonder why uh, James would uh, compare Rich, our lives to a vapor. And, and, and he, he understood that, that we're not going to be here for long. We're not promised to be here 200 years. Matter of fact, the Bible says that we get three score and ten. And by reason of strength, we'll get four score. And for those that don't know what, the, what that means, that 70 years is the promise. And 80 by reason of strength. Are you here with me? But when I looked at this thing, this vapor, this vapor, I thought about what a vapor really is, and I looked at the uh, the characteristics of a vapor because it, it lets us know that that, that it, it helps me to see and appreciate life. And when I looked at the vapor, I realized the characteristic of the vapor is that it's faint. It's not. Big and boisterous and bold, but it's faint. Sometimes you can barely see it. It is not, it's not the big, gigantic bubble that people think. It's not the big, gigantic ice cube that a vapor can turn to. It's not a bucket of water that comes from, that can turn, turn to a vapor. It's something that's faint. And when I thought about that, when I thought about Deacon Weaver, he wasn't the loudest. He wasn't the biggest. Nor was he the baddest. He thought he was bad. <laughs> and he did not have to be at the front to be effective. Are y'all here with me? He understood that he could take a back seat. He didn't have to say a whole lot. He didn't have to pat himself on the back or blow his own horn. Amen. He could just be in the midst. Amen, somebody. Amen. I too, I too, Deacon Scott, remember uh, when he got called to be a deacon. I, I remember having a conversation with him, and he told me the same thing. I, I, I can't handle this. I'm not ready for this. And I said, if, if, if Pastor Chapman feels that you're ready, you're ready. You ready? So don't 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 get messed up. But if you if, if you're ready, you're ready. Amen. And, and he said the same thing to me. He said, Rev, I can't pray. I say, can you talk? Because <laughs> if you can talk, you can pray. He said, Yeah, I, I can talk. But he said, I'm a man of little words. I said, Well, start reading, you'll get more words. <laughs> And I was glad when I, when I came back and I seen how God had been moving on his life, how he was more confident in his walk as a deacon. He, he, he was more uh, settled in his walk as a man of God. And, and the only, he only had one thing that he was not going to do. He said, Rep, I'm good with going up there. And pray. I'm good with organizing the deacons and letting them know what they go. I'm good with reading the scripture, but I'm not gonna say no hymn. 
He said, there is not a key in the alphabet that can help with my singing. Amen, somebody. And, and he was such a good administrator, such a good deacon chair. He fooled Deacon Scott into thinking that he could sing. <laughs> so now Deacon Scott steps up there all the time. I'm saying, Deacon, I just want to let you know. We will set you up for that. <laughs> but not only is a vapor faint, a vapor is fleeting. It's fleeting. Meaning that it's here one minute and gone the next. Vanishes real fast. It's not meant to be around forever. Are y'all here with me? It's fleeting, meaning that it does not have a permanent residence because it's going to be moving. Are y'all here with me? And, and I, 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 I thought about that, and I thought about how Deacon Weaver was fleeing because he understood that his life would not be forever. He understood the fragileness. He understood that it was faint, but he also understood that it was fleeting. Are y'all here with me? He knew that this was not his permanent home. As much as much as he liked to be on this side, he understood that this was not his permanent home. He he he, he learned it from from life experience. He had had loved ones go on to glory, so he knew that it would not be forever. He knew that he would be. One day, leaving here, he had he had an experience with, with death. He had experience with loved ones going on. His parents, family members, good friends. That one good friend that I know he, he had experience and it hurt him to his core was Deacon Bird. He loved Deacon Bird. They were riding buddies. Amen. He loved the bird. He would just go see the bird when nobody else would go and hang out with the bird. And I know that it, it hurt him when the bird left. But he said, he said, he said, Pastor, he said, we all got to go that way. He said, I'm hurt. But we all going to go that way. So he understood. He understood. He understood that, that, that life is fragile. Faint, bleeding, and it's not forever. He knew that when he left here, that this earthly life had a conclusion, and his spiritual life had an introduction. Are y'all here with me? I, 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 I'm about to sit down. I, I, when I think about Deacon Weaver understanding that life was a forever, he knew that he needed to make sure his house was in order. And, and too many times we take life's fragileness for granted and won't put our houses in order. Too many times we think that we got forever to get stuff right and not accepting the fragileness of life and, and, and will not set things right. Well, well, let me help you out. Let me help you. Let me help you out right now. Listen, none of us going to be here forever. And since none of us going to be here forever, why waste time? On crazy stuff. He, he didn't waste time on crazy. He just go around by it. He, 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 he did not want to entangle himself with foolishness. And we need to learn something from that because too many of us waste time with this frail, fragile, fleeting life with foolishness. And, and, and he, he wasn't going to get caught up like that. He's like, Red, I'm going to do what I'm going to do. 
people going to like it or not. Amen. Amen. Now, I love somebody to say, you know what I'm going to do what I'm going to do because he was not saying that he was going to do his will. Yes. He was saying, whatever God tells me to do, yes. I'm going to do that. Yes. So, so let me give you this for free. For those that, that may have unresolved things with folk in your life, listen. Right. Ten seconds from now, I ain't promise. Set your houses in order. I, 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 that night, that night that I got the call from Deacon, from Sister Weaver, I, it, it was not really an unusual call because I had gotten calls late at night from Deacon Weaver before. Because <laughs> Deacon Weaver is the one that our security company calls when there's an alert at the church. And oftentimes, sometimes I stay here till like 12 o'clock at night and, and they'll turn the remote, they'll turn the, the, uh, the alarm system on remotely and it's motion sensor. So I don't know it's turned on, so I get up and move, Tom. <laughs> and when I get up and move, it goes off. And Dick would call, he would always call me first, like, rap. Did you have a church? I'm like, yeah, I think I, I, I ain't know y'all had turned it on. So it was not unusual for me to get a phone call to something in the morning. And, and then I got the call. It wasn't him. It was really me. And it, 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 it puzzled me. It, it jogged me. It just jolted me. I said, I'm on the way. And when I saw him, I saw how God had changed him. Amen. Amen. In a moment, in a twinkle of an eye, God had changed him. Because I had just saw him Easter Sunday. Two days before that. And I, and I made a joke with him because uh, he was sitting in the hallway after service. And, and I don't know how, but you know, it just so happened me and him had on the same color suit that Sunday morning. And you know, you know, like, it wasn't it wasn't no dark suit, it was like an Easter suit for, for us. <laughs> Y'all know when we were young, they buy you a little white suit, a little green color suit for Easter, and you tell you don't get it dirty. Well he had his little cream color suit. And I had on my little cream color suit. And he was sitting out there in the hall. I said, I'm so glad somebody else wore an Easter suit to church today. And he just laughed. I said, we look like twins today. And I thought about how that one had just been 48 hours ago. And here it is. It's changed. When I saw him on the bench, last time I saw him, Alive, and I saw heaviness. I saw tiredness. I saw infirmity, but I also saw determination because he was determined to come to church, no matter what. I saw a man that loved God that was willing to put it all out there and come. I saw the hard head of this too. Because that's just the human being. But when I saw him at the hospital, I saw peace. I saw what God had did in him those last three years. I saw how God had changed his countenance. He had become more paternal. Because he dealt with the family. He loved his family. Grandchildren on him. Great grand on him. I saw how he was such a great provider. Amen, somebody. Y'all know he was a great provider. Not only to those that had his name, but to those who. <laughs> needed some help. 
I saw him when he first came into church, how sometimes he would get a little irritated that things were going too long, but I saw the change in him that he had now become more patient with people. And, and I, I saw, I saw, I saw how he became such a positive man. And as a deacon, as a deacon, and a deacon chair, he was always positive. Even when we disagreed, he was positive. And that's an attribute that a lot of folk have, need to have. Because some folk just negative nasty. They everything, everything wrong with them. But deep was positive. Amen, somebody. I saw, I saw, I saw the man that I knew to be one of the greatest pocket pushers. Y'all missed that. Oh, he was a poppy pusher. If you don't know what a poppy pusher is, that means that every year the VFW had this sale where they would sell poppies. And Deep would be right there at the top pushing poppies. So I saw this man that God had changed. And now my friend is gone. I would say to this family, no, don't grieve, but let's celebrate him. Amen. Celebrate the goodness that you know about him. Celebrate the joys that he had. Celebrate the fact that he did not leave here not knowing who God was. You ought to be sad when they don't know who God is. But he left knowing who God is. He had a relationship. Mighty and strong. And because of that relationship, we know where he is. He ain't lost. Lost is mean you don't know where he is. We know where he is. He's in the presence of the Lord. Because the Bible says to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Look at it. Normally, normally this would already be shut. And I guess the Lord wanted to be open so I can say this. He looks just like he asleep. I don't see sickness anymore. I don't see frailty or fragileness anymore. I see a man, the body of a man, who has gotten the victory that we all want to get someday. Victory because death still has no power. There's hurt is going to go away because his life was in Jesus' hands. And y'all know who Jesus is. He's, he's our living in the valley. He's our bright morning. So he's the one that died for our sins. But he's the one that got up on that third day morning with all power in his hands. We love deep. God loves the best. So celebrate that he got the victory. Celebrate the life that he lived and the legacy that he has behind. I look at this, this family, his beautiful children, his grandchildren, great grand. Honor him by celebrating. And realizing that life is very, very fragile. So make the best of it while you have time. Amen. 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 We can go. Because I you will be be in this morning. Family, we're praying for you. We're praying with you. And know that God is with you. He's going to dry your weeping eyes. 
He's going to keep you in perfect peace. Come on, stand to your feet. The body of Deacon Reader will be laid to rest Monday in Bristol at the National Cemetery. But we commit the Bible on this day. And the commitment is one of the last things that we do for a believer. When we understand that God created us, we understand that we're going back to God. For as much as it please Almighty God and His wise providence to take out of this world unto Himself the soul of our deceased brother, we therefore commit His body to the ground. Earth to earth, ashes to ashes, and dust to dust. We therefore now look and listen for a voice from heaven saying unto me, Right, this are the dead which die in the Lord, from henceforth saith the Spirit, that they may rest from their labors and their works do follow them. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, God, for what our eyes have seen, our ears have turned, our hearts have felt. We thank you, God, for allowing Deacon Reaper to pass through our lives for a little while. God, we know he's in your presence right now. So, God, we who are left behind, we need you. Touch his wife. Please. Touch his children. Yes, his grands, his greats. Touch his family. Touch his friends, neighbors. And God touches his church family as well. God, we need you. And we can't make it without you. In Jesus' name. In Jesus name. Now may the grace of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. The love of God and sweet communion of His Holy Spirit. May He rest rule and abide with us in for now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. The repass, real quickly. The repass is going to be at Howard Academy. Amen. So please, there is not going to the cemetery, just around the corner to the repass. So help the family get you know, away.